the giant giant kelp restoration project at Tankers Reef introductory webinar. For divers, Monterey is internationally known for pristine kelp forests that tower above us and sway with the waves. Canopy forming giant kelps is the fastest growing marine plant on the planet. It's fronds and protection for hundreds of animal species. The pristine kelp forest is threatened by a rising tide of urchins. Tonight we have three presenters. My name is Keith Rutsar and I am a project leader and a recheck volunteer. I'll be followed by Mark Shargell, a professional marine life photographer. Our final speaker is Jen Rowe, a dive master with Blue Endeavors. For discussion today, I will tell the backstory. Why do we need to call urchins? I'll discuss the giant, giant kelp restoration project at Tankers Reef as well as project goals and future expansion. Our new kelp restoration specialty course will be presented by Mark. And most importantly for you tonight, volunteer opportunities will be presented by Jen. We will do our best to be brief and there'll be lots of time at the end to ask your questions to our panel. So why do we need to call urchins? Unprecedented events occurred. Beginning about 2014, we experienced three years of extraordinary marine heat waves. We witnessed a massive sea star die off of 22 species of sea stars, including the large multi-armed sunflower star. The sea stars succumbed to a sea star wasting disease that caused them to suffocate, detach their arms and turn to goo. Reef check volunteer surveyors tracked the sudden and near, nearly complete die off of the sunflower star throughout all four California regions. And nearly the same time, purple urchins had a population explosion. You can see that in 2015, the urchins were already two years old. So these urchins were born in 2013. Reef check data shows that around the Monterey Peninsula, and Carmel Bay beginning in 2014, the purple urchin density went from one urchin every 25 square meters to 10 urchins in one square meter. Urchins like to eat kelp. They prefer fronds that fall from the algae and settle to the bottom. But when there is not enough kelp to feed all those hungry urchins, they change their behavior and come out of the cracks to forage for live kelp. The result is this heat map from Josh Smith that shows clearly and dramatically the recent massive kelp loss at Lover's Point and Cannery Row. When urchins live in a barren, they exhaust their food supply and they stay alive by eating off the protein in their gonads. Urchins are related to starfish and have five part radial symmetry. Here you can see what a healthy and an unhealthy urchin look like inside. A starving urchin can live without eating for years. There are two species of canopy forming kelps in Monterey. Bull kelp is an annual and must regrow each year. Its spores are at the top and they are sp spread far and wide in ocean currents. Giant kelp is a perennial and can live for eight years. Its spores are at the bottom and only spread a hundred yards or so along the bottom. That is why it is essential to keep the old growth adult kelp forest alive so they can regrow. In 2019, I led ReCheck volunteers on a three-year urchin experiment at Lovers 3 in Pacific Grove. The thesis of the experiment was to determine the threshold density where an urchin barren will naturally return to a kelp forest ecosystem. We monitored and manipulated the urchin density on 20 rocky patch reefs surrounded by sand to a prescribed number of urchins. On a reef, which initially was home to 736 urchins, we reduced the number to two. 
When we visited three weeks later, we found that two little bull kelps were born on the reef. Three weeks later, two, two giant kelp plants grew in the bull kelp holdfast. And then the giant kelp grew up and wrapped around the bull kelp and grew 25 feet high. The urchins ate the bull kelp holdfast, but the giant kelp was so twisted around the bull kelp that it held it in place. Notice too that when we returned every three weeks, the number of urchins we called decreased. By the third pass, the urchins were under control despite large urchin barrens nearby that were separated by sand. The giant kelp lived until the second year, so the threshold density averaged 0.6, but then it was eaten by urchins. In, in the first year, we were calling purple urchins only, but we found that the red urchin population exploded by over 300% when purple urchins were removed. The reds came in to cannibalize on purples and never left. It became rather difficult to find two little urchins on a rock with 340 large urchins. The next year, we removed both red and purple urchins. New kelp settled and survived. Reef check and moss and marine labs are continuing the experiment to determine what are other limitations to kelp growth, like colonial sand tube worms or brittle stars. The project at Tankers Reef will test threshold urchin density too. In conclusion, when we move both purple and red urchins to less than one urchin per square meter, kelp could grow and survive. After being denied in 2019, I approached the Fish and Game Commission at the beginning of 2020, and we were successful in changing the sport fishing regulations from 35 urchins per diver per day to an unlimited number of purple and red urchins at one specific site in Monterey for a period of three years. The rule amendment says, red sea urchins and purple sea urchins may be taken in any number for the purpose of restoring the kelp ecosystem. Red sea urchins and purple sea urchins may only be taken by hand or with manually operated handheld tools. The diving community stepped up and convinced the Fish and Game Commission to allow a recreational eradication fishery. The overwhelming consensus from hundreds of letters and speakers in the diving community was that this is necessary and divers wanted to participate in calling urchins if it could be done in a scientifically meaningful way. This project is the rare opportunity that divers asked for. You can see here the Tankers Reef project site. The red boundary is a special enforcement zone from the Department of Fish and Wildlife. You may be familiar with Shale Island in about 55 feet of water. Uh, the left boundary is east of the marina mooring fields and extends 1.6 miles down a sandy beach to the right boundary, which is in line with the seawall at the Monterey Tides Hotel. The site has a, sh has a shale bottom and historically giant kelp has dominated the site on and off, subject to ocean conditions and sand movements that cover and uncover the reef. There is presently an urchin barren with some scared giant kelp in places. Dan Abbott with Reef Check is constructing an underwater cable grid to aid the project divers in navigating and determining the area to call urchins. The two and a half acre grid is about 800 feet from shore in 27 to 32 feet of water. Our project goals, project goals, do this safely. We wanna train divers to cull urchins properly without harming other marine life. We're gonna reduce purple and red urchin density below two per meter squared in the treatment area. The Department of Fish and Wildlife will monitor our work to see how well we are meeting these goals. There's other project goals to uh, establish a giant kelp forest at Tankers Reef provide a giant kelp spore bank for future kelp forest recovery. And we're gonna monitor changes in the kelp forest community and provide a habitat for Southern sea otters. The cable grid will have a mooring ball for boats to anchor on the west and east side. There will be surface marker buoys for divers culling urchins away from the grid. The underwater cable grid uh, will direct divers to swim lanes with built-in tape measures and 330 foot swim lanes for buddy teams to, of divers to cull urchins side by side, 15 feet wide. Divers will enter data via our online data portal or on their phone at the dive site or at home on their computer waiting for their gear to dry. 
state policy is to not allow restoration activities in marine protected areas. The blue state marine conservation areas only allow- Join fishing. the meeting. The red state marine reserves do not allow anything to be taken. The best shore and boat access is within these marine protected areas with granite and sand bottoms. If this project is successful, we will petition the state to allow us to scale our efforts into the marine protected areas next year. What is the end game? We can't kill all the urchins. There are infinity urchins. The goal is to provide ecosystem services for kelp forests where we can so that if urchins die off from disease or predation, the kelp forest could reestablish. We need to move beyond Monterey's pristine kelp forest history and foster biodiversity in a kelp forest ecosystem in a warming, acidic, stormy, less oxygenated, plastic filled and overfished ocean. We are knowingly destroying the life support system of our planet, but the ocean is not the problem. The ocean is the solution. The ocean is bigger and has more life than the land and it absorbs our carbon and gives us water to drink and air to breathe. Now is the time for divers to practice good ocean stewardship and be part of the solution. The hard work we will do is our duty, our obligation, and our hope for future generations to enjoy the ocean that we love. Dream big, senor en grande. Please join us on this adventure into a bold new future for our ocean and our planet. Next is professional marine photographer, Mark Shargell. Mark Shargell is a professional marine life photographer with 43 years of diving experience. He participated in mapping the MPAs we dive today and has published four books on California coastal oceans. Mark took on the unenviable task of creating a new worldwide diving certification to suit this complicated and rapidly evolving project. Without Mark's tutelage and bold ideas, this, none of this would have been possible. Reverend Mark Sherrill. Keith, uh, thank you so much for those kind words. Appreciate the generous introduction and I appreciate the generous help I've gotten in developing the kelp forest restoration diver uh, specialty certification class. That's a class that you will be able to get from many uh, Monterey area instructors, uh, both through NAWI and PADI. Uh, we have uh, paperwork organizations and we hope to be able to offer you that class in starting in mid to late April. Uh, in the class, uh, you will learn why conservation-minded divers are working on uh, relieving our kelp forests of the onslaught of urchins. Uh, you'll find out where the project experiment area is. And the biggest section of the class is about how to go about culling urchins uh, in a way that does not impact other marine life. Uh, as Keith has explained, as many of you have seen with your own eyes, uh, the soaring, uh, highly biodiverse kelp forests that we've been diving in for decades have been invaded by one to 200 million sea urchins that chew away the kelp at the base and leave in their wake these barren areas, urchin barrens, where little more than urchins uh, can manage to survive. Uh, the project area is Tankers Reef, uh, just east of the Monterey Harbor, uh, you can see here. Uh, the trapezoidal outline is the area where the fishing regulations have been changed to allow us to take many, many urchins. And within that uh, project area is an experimental zone, 100 meters by 100 meters, uh, that Reef Check and Dan Abbott have been coordinating with Keith to lay out on the bottom. In the class, you'll learn how to uh, navigate to the area and navigate within the area so that you know where you're working and then after your dives, you can report where you have been calling urchins. So that brings us to how. And in order to understand how to uh, best clear urchins from this zone, it's a little helpful to understand how urchin behavior has changed in the last seven years since the 2013 sea star wasting event. Uh, 
In the class, you'll learn a little bit about identifying the two kinds of urchins that dominate Central California. Those are the purples in this photo. And we also have the larger red ones that you see here with a couple of purple, purples cohabitating with them. And you'll learn a little bit about urchin anatomy so that you can understand what you need to do to prevent an urchin from uh, spawning uh, after you have hit it. Uh, in the class, we'll go over the essential skill of neutral buoyancy and how to make sure that your fins and body don't damage other marine life uh, than the urchins that are your target. And you'll learn how to separate urchins from other marine life that you don't want to have impact on. So where urchins are next to other things like a sponge and a tunicate here, um, here's an example of a diver using a hammer to move the urchin onto rock that has nothing but encrusting algae on it. That algae is almost bulletproof. And then down goes the urchin. After each dive, uh, there is a data portal that's already up and running where you'll be able to log what you've done. Uh, this is a screenshot from that portal, uh, like I said, already exists. And it only takes two or three minutes either on your phone or on a uh, desktop computer uh, to record your information about where you worked on the dive. So are you ready? Well, here are the few things that you need in order to be ready to take this class. Uh, your open water certification, some experience diving in Monterey waters, proficiency with neutral buoyancy, and getting into and out of the water uh, at Belmonte Beach. You'll need to be able to read a compass, but that's about it. If you can tell whether you're facing north, south, east, or west, that's enough. And if you're not completely certain about whether you possess all of these skills, you can always talk to the instructor teaching the tough forest respiration class that you're taking about combining it with some augmented training to brush up on any skills. How long does it take? How much does it cost? Uh, we're still polishing up the online learning section, uh, but we think it will take about four hours total to work your way through. It's online. It will be self-paced. You can do it at the speed and at time of your convenience and in one session or multiple sessions as you choose. There is one day of diving involved with getting the certification. It will include a beach navigation exercise to practice what you'll be doing underwater. And then depending on your instructor and the certifying agency, one or two dives at Tanker 3. Uh, before you do the first dive, you do need to have a California sport fishing license. The state has set the price for that at $52.66 annually. And that address on the screen there is where you can get it. Uh, the fee for the course is set by the instructor or dive shop with whom you sign up. It will vary by the number of dives and uh, maybe as little as $200 and up. Uh, it will include certification card and access to the giant, giant kelp restoration authorized kelp hammer with its beautiful pink lanyard. Uh, clubs, we think, will have supplies of these hammers. We know of, of at least one dive boat will be taking divers out to Tanker's Reef and they'll have the hammers on board as well. They can also be obtained through G2KR by contacting uh, us by the website. We hope that this project will convince the Fish and Game Commission that community-based volunteer scientists, that's us, uh, will be able to begin similar projects on the areas that we dive inside the marine protected areas. We volunteers will be supplying the muscle power to do the culling. There are scientists with state and federal agencies monitoring the project. Success will be measured by our ability to remove urchins without impact on other marine life. So please sign up for the class, uh, study, study up and pay attention when you're in it and get out there and call carefully. I hope to see you 
uh, out on Tanker's Reef for a dive sometime soon. Thank you. And now I will kick it over to Genevieve Rowe, who will tell you about how you can get involved as a volunteer diver. Thank you very much, Mark. Bear with me while I share my screen. All right, hello everyone, my name is Jen. In this section, we will go over how you can get involved as a volunteer diver, prizes for volunteer divers and dive clubs, sponsors and fundraising efforts thus far, and how you can be an ocean advocate. So how can you get involved? Please register to dive using this link below. Um, one of the co-hosts will copy this link into the chat. With this registration form, it only takes about two to three minutes to fill out. And at the end, you'll receive a confirmation page and instructions to wait two to three days to receive your diver registration number and next steps to sign up for a class. So prizes, for each dive that you log, it'll count as a virtual raffle ticket. We will be drawing winners at the end of the dive season. During the registration process, you can indicate your affiliation with a dive club. So the dive club with the highest number of dives will also receive a special award. We welcome donations of raffle prizes. So if you or your company is interested in donating dive gear, dive trips, spots on a charter, or gift cards for goods and services, please get in contact with Keith Rootsart. We'd like to thank the sponsors and the individuals who have funded this project. A huge thank you goes to sustainablesurf.org and to Louise Woolley for their major donations to this project. We also wanna thank all of you who have donated via GoFundMe, Facebook fundraisers, and via Venmo. For fundraising, our main platform is our GoFundMe. And you can see the link here on the screen. So the funding will cover project costs and scholarships for eligible divers. We'll, we will be purchasing for the grid, buoys, cables, and anchor bolts. We, we will also be purchasing permits, subscribing to a web portal, purchasing GPS equipment, cameras, and covering the cost of training and fishing licenses for our scholarship recipients. So the GoFundMe will also fund a scholarship for eligible student and military divers. In the registration process, you can indicate if you are interested in applying for the scholarship. And the scholarship will cover your certification, your hammer, and your annual fishing license. Uh, we do ask that the scholarship recipients commit to five urchin culling dives. So how can you be an ocean advocate? We're really excited about getting divers in the water and culling urchins, but we're also excited about getting divers to spread the word about Tanker's Reef and about the urchin crisis in general. Um, so we encourage you to sign up for the G2KR newsletter and we'll, we'll post the sign up, the newsletter sign up link in the chat box. Once you're signed up on the newsletter, you'll receive updates from Keith regarding state meetings that address MPA policy or kelp restoration. I know that many of you on this call were so wonderful in speaking in support of Keith's urchin petition uh, last year. So we encourage all of you to continue to do the same in the coming years. The next step after Tanker's Reef is to expand the urchin culling into MPAs. So this Tankers Reef project is really a stepping stone in order for us to ask for permission to start calling in the MPAs. So we have breakwater on our, our top site, um, on our wish list for next year. These are all the ways how you can stay up to date on the project. So please check out the G2KR website, Facebook page, and subscribe to the newsletter. And we're gonna paste in the chat box, a link to the data portal where you can view the real-time submission of the dive log data. 
So please share this registration information for Tankers Reef with your buddies on social media. Right here is the link. We're gonna make sure that's in the chat box. So I'm really hoping that all of you attending tonight can sign up if you haven't already. And before we end, we wanted to thank all the collaborators and allies who have supported the Tankers Reef project. All right, this concludes our presentation. We are going to open it up to questions. So.